Hello and welcome to Five Year Club video number 120. This is a backdoor Roth scenario. It is advice for relatively high income earners, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Today on Facebook, I came across a post by someone. The names have been deleted to protect the innocent. Tomorrow, my husband is working his last day at his current job. Next week, he reports for the first day of police academy to become a New York State Trooper. This is his dream job. It will also come with a decent pay raise to help us towards our fire goals and a pension plan. What should we do with his current 401k? Lewis says, uh, direct rollover to Vanguard IRA if over $10,000, invest in VTSAX, that's the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Admiral shares that have a little bit lower fee than some of the others. Otherwise, uh, invest it in VTI, which would be the um, exchange traded fund ETF version of the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index, so a very similar investment with very slightly higher fees but doesn't require a $10,000 minimum. And uh, and then I just say that this is a total stock market index and the 20 year performance will be excellent. And we know that statistically because we can look at rolling 24, 20 year periods and we can tell that um, it's, a, it's a reliable investment. And I've discussed this investment strategy in many other videos, so I don't need to discuss it again. Uh, a good number of people like that, seven of all the comments, uh, this is the one that was liked the most, but it was also an early comment, so okay, fair enough. Someone, you know, chimes in, do this. Okay, cool, he agrees with me. And finally, somebody says, that depends on their current expected adjusted gross income. You don't want to roll over a traditional IRA if there's a chance they want to do a backdoor Roth. What? What's going on here? Someone's disagreeing with Lewis? That's not allowed. Also, what does a rollover have to do with a backdoor Roth, which is just a conversion of um, a traditional uh, IRA to a Roth IRA. Why should that be associated with a rollover? What's going on here? Well, I didn't include the discussion here, but uh, someone else in this thread of uh, messages explained it. Uh, and then I caught on and I was like, oh, that, that scenario. And so that scenario is the one that I wanted to discuss today. Um, so let's get into it. And I'm going to do some review now. Uh, well, let me, let me just discuss uh, for a second what my goal is with this video. My goal with this video is not to tell you what to do. My goal is to tell you uh, something you might want to do, uh, but mainly I, I just want you to listen to the details of this situation so that you remember some of them later so that when your particular um, situation comes up, you have a little bit of knowledge in advance about how these retirement accounts are interacting and really how important some of these details are because a lot of people, they gloss over because these details are boring and they lose hundreds of thousands of dollars because of it. And let's, let's talk about why that is. All right. First, all, first off, I wanted to say this scenario has to do with people who are in high incomes. It's just a fact. The, the rules I'm going to talk about, this backdoor Roth that's mentioned in this thread, these are techniques uh, that are used or that have to be used by people with high incomes because people who have lower incomes have better options in terms of the retirement account rules. Um, the higher income people are taxed more and so they have to try to find clever ways of avoiding some of those taxes if they can. First of all, first off, well, let's discuss income limits contributing to a Roth IRA. The Roth IRA is the post-tax IRA that grows tax-free. So you contribute post-tax money to it, money that you've already paid taxes on. It grows tax-free. And then when it is distributed later in retirement, you also get that money tax-free. So it's never taxed again after the first time you pay taxes on it. If you are single, these are the 2017 rules, I guess, you must have a modified adjusted gross income under 133000 to contribute to a Roth IRA for the 2017 tax year, but contributions are reduced starting at 118000 In other words, if you make above 118000 you will not be able to contribute uh, the full amount to a Roth IRA. And if you make above 133000 you won't be able to contribute a dollar to a Roth IRA directly. 
If you are married filing jointly, your modified adjusted gross income must be less than 196000 with reductions beginning at 186000 So they actually penalize married couples here. That's a, that's a little asshole thing to do there, penalize married couples. Good job. Okay. Now here's a traditional IRA. And the, the rule I want to mention here is that if you make above $72,000 and your employer offers a 401k or a 403b or some kind of retirement plan, then you will not be able to take a deduction on your traditional IRA contribution. Why is this worth mentioning? Because when you make above $72,000, uh, it means that um, both, of, both the Roth and the traditional become essentially post-tax for you because you can no longer take that tax write-off on your contribution after you make 72000 And so uh, both, the, both a person who contributes to a Roth IRA and a person who contributes to a traditional IRA, they will both be using post-tax money. And, and so the inputs essentially are the same, right? And I want to go cover some examples now because I want to show you specifically why, even though the inputs are the same uh, for these people who make more money, the people who get to uh, contribute to a Roth IRA have a much, much better outcome uh, throughout their career. All right. So the scenario we're going to talk about is you contribute what is currently the max, 5500 a year, to uh, one of these, you know, a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA for 30 years. We're going to assume a 7% growth rate. And uh, after 30 years, the account should contain $555,897. Right? So this is the amount that is in the account. All right. Now keep in mind the Roth IRA is never taxed again. The traditional IRA. Uh, even though you could not take a tax write-off on your contribution, um, the growth of the account will be taxed when you withdraw it. And the only way that your original contributions will not be taxed a second time is if you fill out IRS Form 8606 uh, so that they record a basis. All right, let's get into it. So let's say you go the traditional IRA route. This is the amount of money in the account. The basis is considered the contributions you made that you didn't take a tax write-off on. In other words, any post-tax contributions. In this case, our basis is going to be $5,500 a year for 30 years. So the total basis is going to be $165,000. And this is what Form 8606 should track. Um, if you do not fill out Form 8606, okay, you are going to be paying tax on this basis again when you withdraw the money. If we assume a 25% tax rate, then that is about $41,000. So filling out this annoying form for 30 years is worth about $41,000 to you. So fill out the form. Like it's not, a, it's not that hard of a form to fill out. That, that means that it's, it's worth over $1,000 every time you fill out that form. That's a pretty good rate. All right. If we filled out the form properly, the way this traditional IRA is going to be taxed is we're going to say $555,000, which is the account balance. And we're going to say, okay, subtract out the basis, $165,000. Now here we have the growth, $390,897. So if your tax rate is only 25%, then on this 390,000, you are going to have to pay 97,724, about $100,000, all right? Now, of course, you're not going to be uh, taking 555,000 as a lump distribution. You're going to be taking it out in chunks every year as you need to use some of it. But over time, uh, assuming that you withdraw all of it eventually, you would pay a total of about $100,000 in taxes, roughly. Okay, now let's discuss the Roth scenario, $555,000, and you pay $0 in additional taxes because it is a Roth account, and those are the rules. So 
you know, with the Roth IRA, again, in this high income situation, same uh, contribution inputs for 30 years, $5,500 post-tax, no tax write-offs, nobody gets any tax write-offs. But with the Roth IRA, you are not paying $100,000 in taxes. That's really cool because we can now use that $100,000 for something else like buying a really fancy sports car, except we can't actually afford a Ferrari because of inflation. Uh, but we can afford a really pimped out Honda Civic. Uh, actually, I think I calculated the inflation factor was about 2.42 after 30 years. So yeah, you get a fancy Honda Civic. But you know, maybe my 7% was conservative. So maybe you do get, you know, that um, nicer luxury car. Who knows? That's not the point. The point is Civic Type R is a cool car. All right. So what can we conclude from this? A Roth, where you don't pay 100000 or a traditional, where you do have to pay 100000 in taxes. Well, we can conclude that uh, we really would like to do the Roth. That would be very pleasant. But we have a problem. The problem is, of course, that if you are above 133000 in income, then your income is too high to contribute to a Roth IRA. So you're not allowed to. And so if we stop there, then we give up and we have to pay that $100,000. I'm going to dump this cat on the floor, give my feet some breathing room. All right. The solution, the solution is the backdoor Roth. And the backdoor Roth is quite simply contributing to a traditional IRA and then converting it to be a Roth IRA because there is no income limit on conversions of traditional IRAs to Roth IRAs. Okay, Lewis, that sounds cool. But we have a problem. When we convert a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, we are not allowed to cherry pick which dollars we are converting. We can only, uh, we, we cannot, for example, convert only the basis. In other words, we cannot convert only those post-tax contributions that we made to the traditional that we've already paid taxes on and avoid paying taxes that way. Instead, we have to pay taxes in a prorated way. And I'm going to go through the details of how that's done. Um, as far as I know, you want to talk to a professional about it, but it's going to look roughly something like this. If we wanted to convert $10,000, say, of our $555,000 uh, traditional IRA portfolio, then we would say, okay, $10,000 uh, divided by 555,897 is about 1.79889439999% of the portfolio. Okay, so like say 1.8% of the portfolio. All right, so now we say 1.8% times the basis, which we've already paid taxes on, is equal to about $3,000. So we don't have to pay taxes on this $3,000 because we've already been taxed once on it. But 1.8% of this other amount, three, the growth, 390897 is equal to $7,031. The way that this is taxed when you do a conversion from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA is they take this amount, $7,000, they count it as income, and then they tax it not at your overall tax rate, but it's going to be taxed at your marginal tax rate. So instead of being taxed at the overall tax rate, like I was quoting up here with that 25%, when you're taxed at your marginal tax rate and you're at a high income in a state like California, your marginal tax rate is like 50%. You're getting destroyed. So this would be like, you know, 7,000 divided by two, that'd be, you have to pay $3,500 of tax to convert $10,000. That's not, that's not any good. That's not any good. And if you, you know, I use this $555,000 number here um, because I already had it and I, and, I, and I could, right? But you can imagine that you might want to do one of these conversions uh, far before you have accumulated $555,000 in the account, say when you only had $100,000. But, you know, when you have $100,000 in the account, um, 50000 of that could be uh, gain, and therefore you would be paying $25,000 
to convert $100,000. And that is super unpleasant, and you're being taxed at a very high rate on that money when you take that route. So this is no fun. The fact that we can't cherry pick uh, which dollars we're converting to do this backdoor Roth. So we don't, we don't want to do this. What you might want to do in this scenario is leave California. Uh, so this is the uh, IRA conversion ladder. I believe that's the name of uh, the Roth conversion ladder is the name of this scheme. You might want to leave California, wait for like a year or whatever it is, so you're not considered a California state residence. If you are beginning your early retirement, say you've gotten really good at living cheaply, so you're only living on, say, $15,000 of realized income, well, now you're at a really low marginal tax rate, and so it could be worth it to convert a larger chunk of money then. But um, not when you're at your full high-income wealth-building stage. The solution to this problem, only IRA money is considered in the calculus here, right? So we need to get rid of our IRA money so that we can contribute to a, a traditional IRA and that's the only money that's in any IRA and then we convert it and since it's all basis since the only money that's in any IRA, we don't have to pay any taxes on it. So we're gonna have to kill this IRA with fire. Well, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna are we going to withdraw the IRA and pay all that tax at once and pay all that penalty at once? Heck no, there's no way we're going to do that. Instead, if we have a decent 401k, and decent means good investment options like index funds with low fees and just low fees overall, if we have a decent 401k, then we would like to roll our traditional IRA into our decent 401k. When we do that, we won't have any IRA money anymore. We won't have any of this pre-tax traditional IRA money anymore. And then we can fund a traditional IRA outside of the 401k with 5,500, immediately convert it into a Roth. We don't have to pay any taxes because at that point there aren't any gains. And now we have nothing but post-tax money, uh, Roth IRA money outside of the 401k. And the next year we can do exactly the same thing. So this means that all of our pre-tax invested money that's going to be taxed later lives inside of our 401k instead of uh, living outside our 401k. There are some uh, there are some things that I would like to point out now. There are some caveats. Number one, you cannot roll a 401k back into a traditional IRA until you leave the company that you're at. And I think there are also rules about how often you're allowed to roll over 401ks. And so... Once that money goes from that traditional IRA to that 401k, it's going to be there. And if you're at your company for a while, it's going to be there for a while. So you better like that 401k program as an investment option if you're going to do this. And some companies have decent 401ks. Many do not. And so if you look in your 401ks full of a bunch of you know, high-fee trash funds, this may not be the route to go. And this, you, know, you have to figure out something different. Another caveat, only 69% of 401ks allow incoming rollovers, right? And obviously, if your 401k does not allow an incoming rollover, then you're not going to be uh, doing this. And the final thing is, and I, I can't emphasize this enough, this scenario and this particular solution to this scenario, even though you know 69% of them allow it, and there are some decent 401k programs, I, I think mine is decent, it's Betterment, um, you should ask a tax professional about doing this before doing it. I am not a tax professional. I'm a software engineer who just discovered this on Facebook and read some articles about it. So do not do it solely based on what I am telling you. This stuff gets complicated. The plan de details are complicated. It could totally be worth it. It's $100,000. I didn't screw up that calculation. But you want to talk, it's worth it to you to talk to somebody who does this full time, who knows all of the gotchas and all of the techniques, because they may come across something that is not included in this analysis. The final thing I want to, the final problem I want to point out, and I want to do this separately, is that when you do this rollover, traditional IRA to traditional 401k, it is very possible it will not be a direct rollover, which will mean that your IRA will cut you a check 
for say 80% of the value of your IRA and within 60 days you're going to need to come up with the other 20% to make a whole 80 plus 20 100% of your IRA money. You're going to write a check for that and you are going to uh, send that to your 401k to deposit that money into your 401k and then later you're going to get back that 20% from your IRA um, provider. Uh, but you do have to come up with that cash in the short term to cover this weird rule detail. So if you are rolling over $100,000 from your traditional IRA to a traditional 401k, you may need to come up with $20,000 uh, to make this transaction happen. And you're going to get that $20,000 back. But just having $20,000 liquid to participate in this rollover, obviously most people do not have $20,000 handy to make this happen and that's one reason why you need to talk to the tax professional because they're going to make you aware of these things even more than me what is the solution to coming up with the twenty thousand dollars well if they don't withhold twenty percent when they do the rollover and you can do a direct rollover then great um, i don't know enough about it to know if that's possible but the main solution for problem number three is I am talking in this video to relatively high income people because lower income people are able to just contribute to the Roth directly and this isn't a problem for them. This is why we save money because shit like this comes up in life where we need $20,000 liquid temporarily to execute some rule change so that we can make $100,000 in the long run. And this is a benefit of saving money is that you just have that money sitting around in an account and you can say okay this financially makes sense um so i'm going to do it and i've got the money in the account so regardless of whether i need to come up with it it's there if i need to execute this transaction there are two articles that i found that talk about understanding rollovers from iras to 401ks i'm going to Put them in the description so that you can read about more of the details. Um, some of the off the top of my head, 401ks can offer a little bit better protection against creditors for those funds. And uh, number two is that 401ks can offer some early withdrawal options at age 55 uh, that um, you don't have as much in the IRA situation, which is age 59 for the withdrawal. Another thing about it is that you are not required to take minimum distributions from a 401k if you are still working for that employer. So there are other differences and rules between 401ks and IRAs that you would want to consider when making this decision. Um, and you'd, you'd want to go through that checklist um, before executing this type of transaction to make sure that uh, everything I've discussed is in line with your financial plan, is in line with your long-term goals. All right. Even if you don't have all of this worked out in terms of how the money is going to flow, in early retirement or even if you're going to retire early or even if your savings rate is high enough for any of this to matter if your income is there yet no matter what your situation is i hope that this discussion at least made you aware of some of the moving parts uh, in this retirement account planning uh, in this tax planning and how important these tax decisions can be a hundred thousand dollars you know, and then filling out that form 8606, $40,000. So a total of $140,000 tied up in responsibly paying attention to um, these retirement account tax rules. All right, that's it for five year club video number 100, blah, 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 video number 120. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a fabulous evening.